Today we're going to build Walther's Meadowhead Barn. This is part of my entry into the Walther's National Model Railroad Build-Off 2022. Let's take a look at the kit. It's a pretty simple kit. Floor, four walls, a roof, doors, and a ramp to enter. I decided to add some modifications, so I designed and 3D printed a bunch of things. A new door for the hay mow, a floor for the hay mow, a grain room and a tool room, 12 windows, a box pen, and cattle stalls. The first thing I did is modify the end wall for the new hay mow door. I marked out a new opening by tracing around the frame, cut the new opening out with a hobby saw and knife, and then cleaned it up. Then I sanded away the remaining part of the original door. I mounted the frame behind the wall so the door would be flush and was closed. Then I added some grain to the siding with a wire brush pen. I recut the siding grooves in the sanded portion and then attached the hinge plate. Next was adding the back door to the rear wall. First, I marked out the opening in the center of the wall, 30 inches wide by eight inches tall. Next, I cut the opening with a Dremel tool and a hobby knife. I cleaned up the opening, then framed the opening with scale lumber. I decided the door itself was long gone, either stolen to make a toboggan by some teenagers, thrown on a bonfire, or just routed away. I found a large number of farm structure blueprints on the North Dakota State University site and used them to plan out the interior. One thing I noticed is all the barns had more windows than the Meadowhead barn, so I decided to add some. In the end, I added 12, two on each of the front and back sides and four on each end. As with the other openings, I cut them open with a Dremel tool and cleaned them up. I did some distressing by kicking the bottom of some of the siding boards out adding some damaged edges at the bottom, and adding some grain to the boards using a Dremel, hobby knife, wire brush pen, and sandpaper. Make sure to pick an orientation for the model, and for that matter, the diorama and layout. Remember the south side gets the most sun, the north side the least, and the weathering should reflect that. Making sub-assemblies for the barn interior was next. I put together the tack and tool room, the feed room, the box pens, I used some heavy duty tin foil to make hinges for the gate, and then put together the cattle stalls. There's a concrete base, and then steel stanchions are lined up to make four pens for cattle. Priming in the parts was next. Light gray for the roof parts, dark gray for the walls, and flat black on the interior of the roof. A base coat for the interior wood effects is next. I'm using an ammo wood effects kit, the dark wood version. I painted the concrete base of the cattle pens with chalk paint, something I saw Jason Jensen do. It works out really well. It's very flat and has just the right amount of texture. Then I painted the stanchions and pipings with Vallejo steel. I dry brush exterior with two shades of gray to represent fading from the sun. The next step of putting wood grain on the interior with the ammo kit was using an oil brusher to add various colored streaks with a sponge. I bought both wood grain and rust kits from ammo, Vallejo, and AK, but this is the first one I've used. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a comparison video of them. After the oil brushers, transparent red was sprayed over the panels. This made quite a difference, more than I was expecting. A dark wash was the next step, then a panel liner in a few spots. I think it turned out very well, especially considering the interior kit walls were completely flat and featureless, never being meant as a detailed interior. It produced pretty much the effect I was looking for. Old, dark wood, not weathered by the sun and rain. Assembling the roof fence was next. All the walls, windows, and interior parts were given a wash of diluted black acrylic paint. The exterior walls were hit with hairspray in preparation for chipping. Next, they were painted with Vallejo Fire Red. It took several coats to get sufficient coverage. The windows got a coat of Createx White. Createx is an airbrush paint, more for creating paintings than painting models, but it sprays well and since it would be mostly removed in chipping, I figured it would work well. On to the roof and making it rusty. I used an ammo kit for this too, starting with light rust, then filling in the center of each patch with a darker color, followed by a wash. I wound up redoing the roof because the wash was a little too strong. Even on the second version, it was a little too much. Assembling the interior was next. The tool and tack room was glued to the floor, then the feed room. Next was the box pen. After that, the cattle stalls were installed. The two rooms are empty, so their interiors are painted black. The exterior was chipped with the standard procedure of using water to dissolve the hairspray and a brush or pick to remove some of the paint. As with the distressing, more paint was removed from the south wall, the least on the north wall, and the east and west walls were kept in between. The windows were done in the same manner, 
with four southern, four eastern and western, and four northern windows. The walls were prepped for assembly. First, they had their alignment tabs trimmed to fit the new interior features. Then the main doors were assembled. And last, supports for the Haymow floor were added using 1 16th inch square basswood. Glazing was next. I cut a strip of acetate to the proper width, a little over, then misused a pair of calipers to cut out each pane. The panes and windows were distressed as they were assembled, some with missing panes and muttons, and some with cracks and holes. Then it was time to assemble the walls. The first step was attaching the haymaw door. The door is dangling askew with one hinge still hanging on for dear life. Next, all the gluing surfaces were scraped clean. Then the walls were glued together using styrene cement and making sure to get each wall in the proper place. Hay, made from some twine, was added to the interior with some homemade scenic glue from PVA, water, and isopropyl alcohol. The goal was to add some detritus and remnants of the active glory days of the farm. Next, layers of dust were laid down, first with some unsanded grout, followed by a spray of scenic glue, then a fine spray of light tan paint. This made the floor look undisturbed for ages, while the walls retained the old wood look. Assembling the roof was next. First the gluing edges were scraped clean, then everything was glued together starting at the top. This was very fiddly and frustrating, particularly since I wanted to keep it removable for the time being. Then the windows were installed, making sure each one went into the correct wall. I have seen basketball hoops in barns before, and decided to add one here. Maybe this family was known for turning out great players. It is simply an image of a beat up backboard glued to a manila folder, with a thin piece of wire formed into a hoop over the right size drill bit, and hit with some transparent orange paint for a nice aged look. A little algae, moss, and rust were next. Algae was added using some AK Interactive slimy grime, this time concentrating on the north side. Next some tacky glue and fine turf added a little moss on the bottom of the boards. Then some rust streaks were added from the metal parts. A little super glue and the roof fence are attached. Then we were on to the final assembly. The walls were fitted over the floor then glued with some thin super glue. The haymaw floor was fitted next then the hoop was measured up 10 scale feet and affixed. Last was the roof, and it was done, at least until it is installed in the diorama. And now, let's take a look at the finished barn. Of course, the best thing about a barn is the find. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching.